All right, so uh, first we're just going to kind of start off measuring the wood. Uh, this is a uh, cypress wood that I picked up from a local mill. Uh, you're seeing basically this is all rough cut, uh, so basically had to mill it, but I knew kind of what I wanted as far as size, um, so kind of to make it a little bit easier. Um, even really before I milled it, I just wanted to get it to a little bit of smaller pieces so I wouldn't have to mill such big wood. Uh, one thing I did this time for the first time is I hooked my shop vac up to uh, my table saw. Uh, I was, you know, having sawdust everywhere and I hook it to a surge protector, so it's kind of a great tip. Flip my circuit breaker or the power strip on, flip my saw on. Uh, much cleaner shop. Um, so I ripped it down and now I want uh, for width. Now I want to get the correct length. Um, you know, definitely still new to the table saw. Um, so definitely don't take uh, maybe some of my advice on the table saw. Uh, I'm still learning. It still scares uh, me to death. Uh, trying to watch as much as I can. Um, so anybody see things that I'm doing wrong, definitely point it out. I second guess myself a lot. Um, but uh, learn it as I go. Always thinking about everything. So uh, this is kind of my last little uh, thing I need to rip down. Just the end uh, of the board. Wanted to get it uh, nice and flat uh, so I wouldn't have to do as much sanding. And... Then the next thing I want to do is I want to get it into two pieces. All right, now that it's uh, two pieces, you basically get to see kind of what it's going to look like. This is a very simple uh, thing. So now I'm measuring, trying to get halfway. Just want to do some very simple joinery. So I measured it halfway. And then I lowered the depth of the uh, table saw blade. And I'm just going to take lightly some passes. You know, this could be easier if you had the dado blade. Uh, I do not, but this works absolutely fine uh, until I can get a dado blade in. So I'm just making multiple passes, uh, just kind of inching along until I've got that entire pass done. And then I'm just kind of going back and forth on it a couple times to get it as flat as we can. Uh, I did go just a little bit past because uh, I can finish sand that uh, to get that a little bit over. Here's a great little tip uh, to get uh, sanding in those tight edges. I'm just simply wrapping some uh, sandpaper over the edges, over the edge of wood and going back and forth. Uh, works out really, really well. All right, so now, you know, this is definitely uh, sawmilled wood. So there, the, the finish is was extremely rough, so I just quickly put some 90 grit sandpaper on it and uh, went to town on, on the orbital sander uh, and got it smooth. Uh, then I think I went up to a 120 and then ultimately a, even a 220. All sides got sanded. Uh, definitely one thing that I semi messed up on uh, here in just a second, you're going to see that I uh, took to the sander on the, if you want to call it the, the joinery, uh, and it took off a little too much wood. So that's probably something I should have just left uh, to hand sanding. Uh, that power sander definitely has um, some, uh, very quickly can make a mistake. Uh, my favorite tip that I kind of just stumbled upon, um, I'm you know, I, this is the only sander I really have. And to make this curved joint, I just took a, 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 ca a can and, and drew a circle around it, uh, fastened uh, my orbital sander to the bench and turned it on its side. And this absolutely worked great. Uh, I, I did it on both ends of, uh, or both bookends that I've made. Uh, and it fantastically worked. Uh, I need to figure out some way to keep the wood flat um, because it was definitely a little bit uneven and it would probably be quicker if I could just bring it up to it 
or uh, quit being such a, a cheap ass and buying uh, one of those. But here I'm just test fitting uh, the uh, the bottle of whiskey to see where I want to go uh, with it so there, there'll be plenty of room on it. I didn't want it too long. Um, you know, ultimately, I think I may have cut it just a little bit too short, um, but still kind of playing with overall measurements. Definitely, if you want to do anything like this, whatever the subject is that's going to be uh, on the bottom piece of the wood, um, you know, play with the position um, and 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 see what's going to work best. Uh, of course, with the glue, I found this glue brush, and man, it's been nice to use a glue brush. Um, works out really well. When it all dries, it, you can just peel it right off. Don't ever have to think about getting that finger all nasty. Uh, so now we're going to clamp it up. Um, can never have enough clamps. I you know, picked all these clamps up at Harbor Freight. Very, very cheap. Uh, they work great. Uh, you definitely do not have to spend a lot of money. Uh, I don't remember what YouTuber said it, but they said when they were there in the hardware store, every time they go in, they buy clamp. Uh, I think it's a good way to get clamps. You're never going to have enough clamps. I think I use five or six here. Uh, I just wanted to get it uh, for sure all the way um, through or uh, tight, no movement. So we're going to take it all, all, all the way off. You know, let it set up for at least a couple hours. I'm not putting a lot of stress on this. If you, you know, glue joint that you're going to put a little stress, definitely let it go for 24 hours. I had a little bit of glue uh, that escaped. I quickly just took it off. Um, I started using this paper. I uh, picked it up at Lowe's. Uh, it makes finishing or just having a nice, clean work surface so much easier. Uh, ultimately, when I build a, a workbench, I would love to implement it in. Uh, so I'm just going to use some Danish oil here. Uh, just a quick finish. Um, both my bookends, I use Danish oil. One, I use a dark walnut. and This is just kind of a natural finish. Uh, couldn't be easier. Just simply wiped it on. Uh, and I think it did a really, really good job. Very, very quick. First time I'd ever really used Danish oil um, was on, on the first one I did, uh, which you'll see here in a little bit. But it literally just wipes on with a cloth. Uh, could not be any easier. Um, on both of them, which I did not get footage of, when I'm done and the Danish oil dried, I, I took a, just a little bit of uh, uh, Johnson's Base Wax and put just a quick little buff onto it. Um, just to probably protect the finish a little bit. Uh, I think that went on well, but I, all sides, I, uh, put the Danish oil on, uh, Danish oil is very cheap. I think I paid like seven, eight dollars at, at Lowe's for it. Um, and a little bit goes a long way. Um, so I, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm pouring in the rag, sometimes it's pouring it on there and just simply wipe in, dries extremely quick. Uh, I think it re worked out really, really well. Um, my GoPro did die very quickly after this. You don't get to see the uh, glue up of the bottle. Um, I wish I would have got that. All I did was a two-part uh, five-minute epoxy, a little bit on the base of the bottle, um, and and that was it. Uh, held really, really well. Um, worked really well. Uh, ultimately, uh, so you're going to see here in just a little bit, the I put water in my first one. And I want to find a good way to food dye this and to make it tr truly look like a whiskey color. And the problem right now I'm running into, we're in the, the COVID time, and I guess everybody's using food coloring because I cannot find food coloring. And I'm sure I could order it on Amazon. I, just, I haven't even tried to keep going to my local HEB grocery store, and they're out. But here's the finished product. Um, on the left hand side you'll see um, the cypress and of course this is the walnut I chose a, a one of my favorite uh, bullet bourbon and there for weight I'm wanted to add liquid uh, the TX uh, whiskey actually still has some live whiskey um, so that one uh, <laughs> and I actually did not glue this down yet uh, in this picture because uh, I still had to get it out uh, but I think it, it come out really nice I was really pleased Great way to display um, some of my cookbooks or whatever you're wanting to do. Uh, you know, I also, this is a food, food uh, one, so I have lots of cookbooks. I, 
I think I try to collect them, but uh, let me know what you